So in 2023, the software engineering role isn't just limited to front end, back end, and things like database administration, right? Um, it's a very dynamic role that involves building code at uh, the user level, uh, but then also going down to the infrastructure, um, release and delivery, and all the way through data collection. So in 2023 or in today's world and beyond, to actually be uh, successful as a software engineer, you need to at least understand all of these core areas that make up software engineering, even though you may have your strengths in one or two specific areas, right? So in this video, instead of recommending you a random list of my favorite books, I thought I would recommend you one book from each of those core areas that make up a well-rounded software engineer. All of the books will be also linked in the description below. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first category is data structures and algorithms. So these are the foundations of computer science and without them, you're not gonna be able to do much in the world of software engineering, right? Uh, and the book I recommend for that is Grokking Algorithms by Aditya Bhargava. Um, see, the thing is algorithms are complicated things to learn. Um, and on top of that, if you're just trying to learn them from any textbook or just like reading white papers, they can be really boring and all those mathematical proofs and equations and things like that tend to fly over most people's head. The reason I love this book so much is because it's designed to be easy to follow. So the author does a great job of not boring you with uh, crazy mathematical proofs or things that are just like mundane to read, right? And instead he has uh, every concept covered with illustrative examples and very intuitive examples that are super easy to follow, especially if you're a visual learner. So whether you're new to data structures and algorithms or you're just brushing up because you've been rusty for a while i think this book does a great job at explaining things to you without ever overwhelming you um, and once you go through this book you can always go to some more advanced books or if you like academic proofs and stuff like that you can look at books like uh, intro to algorithms by clrs or algorithm design uh, but Word of warning, those are very dense academic books. So in comparison to that, I find a book like this way more easy to read and grasp. Okay, so once you've learned the basics of coding and you understand how to use data structures and algorithms, you still need to build good habits around the act of coding, right? Um, that helps your code uh, become organized, modular, maintainable, and testable, as well as bug-free, right? And for those, I'll recommend you two books that I have probably recommended in all of my previous book videos or most other software engineering YouTubers do uh, as well. And those two books are The Clean Code by Robert Martin as well as The Clean Architecture by Robert Martin. Um, and like I said, you've probably seen this book recommended a thousand times, but there's, there's a good reason for it. These two books basically sum up uh, the tried and tested software engineering best practices that every software engineer should be aware of. Sure, not every principle here 100% applies to modern engineering with um, largely distributed architectures, but when it comes to writing solid maintainable code, these two books are still well worth their value in gold. So. At least um, you'll see a bunch of good examples of good code and bad code, as well as some good design and bad design. And that's immensely helpful. You know, it's awesome to read a lot of books, but one thing about books is that they do take a lot of time to read and not everyone has that time. And you can't help but wonder, wouldn't it be awesome if you could read all the core topics of a book as a really high quality summary? Well, with short form, you can. Shortform produces uber high quality guides to nonfiction books. Uh, their guides are essentially like super powered book summaries that cover all of the book's key ideas. And in addition to that, they also include smart commentary and analysis of the book. Um, it's like your smartest friend teaching you about a book that you want to read. Take Clean Coder by Robert Martin, for example. Uh, as you can see here, Shortform has a nice summary of all the key concepts of every chapter from the book. And one of the techniques Martin talks about 
in chapter five of the book on managing your time well is the Pomodoro technique. And look how precisely and succinctly it's explained here to give you the crux of what the technique is all about. Uh, and they also give you exercises from the book so that you can follow along the way the author actually wanted you to. And if you want to listen to it while you're on the go or jogging or commuting to work, you can do that as well. In addition to tech, short form covers a lot of great topics like self-improvement, entrepreneurship, productivity, science, finance, and many more. If you follow me over at Instagram, you know that I read a lot of books in a lot of different genres, but because of my busy schedule, I don't have time to read them all from cover to cover. So short form has been an indispensable companion to my reading habits these past few years. So yeah, definitely give short form a try. Visit www.shortform.com slash Utsav to get five days of unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on your annual subscription. Link will also be in the description below. Okay, so you've learned how to code and you've covered the best practices in coding. And now it's time to put that knowledge to use by building a product, but in a way that can scale. Uh, and this is where the knowledge of distributed systems come into play. Really, it's 2023, and if you want to be a successful software engineer, you cannot escape distributed architectures. In fact, distributed systems is so important, I have three book recommendations for you. So the first book I recommend for getting started with distributed systems is Understanding Distributed Systems by Roberto Vitillo. See, the problem with trying to learn distributed systems is that it's such a vast topic that it can get quite overwhelming for someone who's new to it. Um, and the reason I love this book so much is that it's probably one of the very few books that I have found on distributed uh, systems that covers a vast breadth of topics in a very elegant manner and puts it all together in a small little book, uh, but without overwhelming the beginners, but at the same time also catering to the intermediate um, level people that are uh, kind of used to distributed systems already. The author starts with the absolute basics, assuming nothing from you and gradually builds up to complex topics. So even if you have some experience, you can still get a lot of value out of this book. I have a full review of this book in my channel. So if you're interested more about the details, feel free to check that one out. A natural follow up to this book once you've finished it is the Red Book or Designing Data Intensive Applications by Martin Kleppmann. Um, this is almost like the holy grail of distributed uh, systems book and um, definitely way more denser than the first book that I recommended. But if you've already read that book or if you know enough that that book is too basic for you, this is a great second step towards learning about distributed architectures. While the first book is at a very high level and gives you a basic understanding of distributed systems, this dives a little bit deeper into the concepts and how they actually operate and the trade-offs you have to deal with uh, when working with distributed systems. Uh, so that obviously is why it makes up for a great follow-up to the first book. While both of these books are amazing books and I highly recommend them for learning distributed systems, but the problem with learning distributed systems in a very academic level or just with the academic knowledge is that it can only take you so far uh, without real world experience. And engineers that are trying to start with distributed systems generally face this chicken or the egg uh, problem because you really can't get the job done without some experience, but then you can't get experience without getting at least one or two jobs done, right? Uh, and this is where my third recommendation comes into play. This is called Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Um, and I think this is a great book to pick up because it is literally a collection of real world examples explaining anecdotally why distributed architectures are hard, uh, why things have worked, why things have not. While this book will never really replace real experience, this is the closest that you'll get uh, to one that can give you all the information that comes from experience, right? Um, and please do understand that this book is not for beginners. Uh, you are expected to at least understand enough basics and even at an intermediate level, how distributed systems work. Uh, so uh, at the very least, make sure you've read the previous two books or have a few years of experience with distributed architectures before you start reading this book. All right, so now you've figured out how to build your application at scale. 
it's time to get it deployed and make sure that we have a robust pipeline that handles um, that process, including monitoring, logging, pre-productions, and the final release to production. Uh, and this is where DevOps comes into the picture. I will keep this one short and simple. Understanding DevOps isn't the most critical thing for a software engineer to learn, but I still highly recommend that you at least understand the basics. And if you ever start your own venture or a revenue generating side project, your DevOps experience will save you a lot of hassles. And to that end, the book I recommend here is Lean DevOps by Robert Benefield. Um, it's a pretty straightforward book that covers all the important areas without boring you with unnecessary information. And it's a pretty easy easy and uh, simple read. So definitely go check that one out if you want to uh, improve your knowledge in the area of DevOps. Okay, so now your application has been deployed out in the wild and you've got a bunch of telemetry and data flowing in. How can you make sense of it, especially in a predictive manner instead of a reactive manner, right? Uh, this is where some knowledge of machine learning can be of immense help. Of course, you can base your core business logic in and around AI itself, but at the very least, you should understand some basic machine learning models that can help you make more sense of your data. I said this with distributed systems and I'm going to say it again with machine learning. It's 2023 guys, you cannot escape machine learning. You have to understand at least the core ideas and the basics, even if you don't use machine learning in your day-to-day -day work. And uh, to get started, especially, I recommend the book. It's called The 100 Page Machine Learning Book by Andre Burkhoff. Um, this is a great little introduction to the world of machine learning. It covers the basics of most of the common machine learning concepts like neural networks and deep learning, which is what models like ChatGP3 are based on. But if you're looking for depth, this book is not for you. Or, or if you're into academic white papers, this might also not be a great fit. Uh, for those of you, you can take the classic machine learning route with Peter Norvik's book. This book instead covers the breadth of machine learning concepts, and that's what makes it a very good book for beginning uh, your journey towards machine learning. So yeah, if you want to get started with machine learning in 2023, it's a great time and this is a great book to do so. Okay, so that's the whole software engineering stack covered. Um, well, at least most of it. Uh, if you noticed, I didn't mention anything about front end. Um, that's because of two reasons. First, I don't have much experience in front end, so I don't actually have many books that I've read myself to recommend to you guys. Second, front end has so many frameworks coming out and available all the time that what you learn really depends on the framework you're using. Uh, so it's difficult to recommend a more generic book that just applies to front end in general. So that's why I decided to skip a recommendation altogether. Well, that's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below if you have any recommendations to make. Obviously, there are so many great books and I obviously don't have time to read all of them. So I'd love to hear what your recommendations are. Also, while at it, please like the video if this was useful and subscribe to the channel if you like software engineering content. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. It's such a vast topic that it can be quickly and fastly it See, the problem with distributed systems or, or learning distribu 